Hello, my friends. We have some interesting news. Russia announced the evacuation from Skadovsk. Firstly, obviously, their administration and later on the local citizens. Skadovsk is located on the very south part of the Kherson region. It's not the big city, but anyways. So even with that, Russia cannot use their military ships to secure this area. In general, speaking about the Russian evacuation, they announced to evacuate this area near to Orihiv together with Melitopol and this area as well. Mostly they evacuate the people to Crimea over here or to Berdansk, which is further away from the front lines. And about the counteroffensive, we have the panicking messages from the Russian army. They say that Ukraine has prepared the army for the counteroffensive action. So they say that the Ukrainian army is located in Zaporizhia region and also in Kherson region. There are many Ukrainian battalions, they say, which are ready for attack at any moment. And Ukrainian forces keep enough distance from the front lines just not to be under the attack of the Russian tactical airplanes. Here we speak about mostly Suhoi Su-25 attack airplane or versatile fighter jet bomber Suhoi Su-34. Russians expect that the main attack directions will be in Zaporizhia oblast near to Oryahiv towards to Melitopol and also from Kherson region with crossing the Dnepr river. Probably that is why Russia started to move their occupation administration from Skadovsk out there. For the operation in Kherson region, Ukraine will use the special forces, the marine forces, to cross the Dnepr river with the using of the boats and other equipment. Based on the data they have, they expect that Ukrainian counterattack will start in a few days. Well, anyways, we'll see it. I think the great moment is this night, because tomorrow it's the great celebration in Russia, the victory in the Great Patriotic War. Yes, they have their own war that was installed into the Second World War. And why they did it? Because Soviet Union with Nazi Germany started the Second World War from annexation of Poland. The Soviet Union as responsible for the Second World War as the Nazi Germany. Well, I think I'll speak about it in my next video. As for the yesterday's rocket attack on Odessa, it was confirmed that it wasn't the storage of the ammunition or something. It was just the big cargo hub for the humanitarian stuff and other things that people usually buy. Yesterday, Russia launched the record number of the drones, 35, and most of them went to Kiev. Our air defense in Kyiv was great and we shut down all of the drones. Unfortunately, one of the drones hit the residential building after it was shut down, but luckily no one was inside at that time. This is the Svitoshina district, very close to the main road that goes through the Kyiv. This video I found on the Russian resource. Yes, I monitor the enemy site and sometimes we have quite a unique content. I wasn't able to find this video on Ukrainian resources, so here we have the long train and you can see many of the Ukrainian tanks out there. They are not marked, but it is for sure Ukraine and we have lots of the vehicles, the plate numbers, you may also check it out. So for sure this is the Ukrainian train and I think this video was filmed for purpose. And you can see lots of the engineering equipment out there, the, the mining plugs or something. And some of the tanks, okay, those are the Leopard tanks. I'm almost sure about it. Well, could be Challenger, but I think those are Leopard 2 for sure. You can see their mast. And this is the American track for sure. So yes, it is the Ukrainian train, lots of the other tracks, lots of the other tanks and many of the other equipment, even a Ukrainian flag on one of the tanks. And I think that this video was filmed for a purpose to show to the Russian side, be aware we are ready for the counterattack. And this increases the panic for the Russian side. Obviously, this train is really long. Right now, Russia launched the Iskander rockets on Ukrainian territory. Probably they're trying to cut the logistics of the Ukrainian side far behind the front lines, but I'm in a great doubt that they will be successful with Iskander rockets. 
First of all, there are not many rockets left, and they are in lack of the precision, unlike the HIMARS rockets, but recently Russia started to block the GPS signals very close to the front lines and also behind the front lines, so for HIMARS it's also getting hard to aim the target, unfortunately. But Russia also needs the GPS signal, otherwise they cannot fire the drones, so it's not forever. They block for some time, but later on unblock, and we need to find the proper time to launch the HIMARS rockets towards the Russian side. Today, the United States officials confirmed that Ukraine has shut down the hypersonic missile. Before, it was confirmed by Ukrainian officials, and now United States also proves that. So Americans are very satisfied with that result, and there was only Ukrainian crew that was operating the system. There were no any advisors from our allies. It means that the training was done fantastically in the United States or maybe in Germany. One more sign that the Ukrainian counterattack may start very soon is that we have all of the promised mix from Slovakia and Poland in Ukrainian Air Force. Great news, but still we have disadvantage compared to the Russian side, and the only thing for now that may compensate are the air defense systems like Patriot systems, and I am 99% sure that we're gonna receive the F-16 fighter jets this year. Alright, more Russian publics say that Ukraine is fully on positions to start the counterattack. Well, if that is truth, we cannot hold them forever at their positions, otherwise Russia may fire their cruise missiles and many more stuff, so the counterattack may start very soon if that information is correct. But I'm in great doubt about it, because mostly it comes from the Russian side. But we shouldn't wait for this information coming from the Ukrainian side, because, yes, it's just stupid to say where we are. However, as I said to you before, in the 21st century, it's very hard to hide the big army that is ready for the counterattack, so obviously Russians know. Hmm, this evening some of the crosses appeared on the Moscow streets, in many of the districts, on many of the roads. The crosses like that. What is happening in Moscow just before the main parade? Right now we have the confirmation that definitely Russia sent the T-55 and T-54 tanks to the front lines. Those were made then the Stalin was alive and this picture comes from the Hungary, Budapest, that the Soviet Union entered the city with their tanks. And those are the new photos showing the T-54 tank somewhere in the Parisia region. This tank may only be effective if Russia will just dig it down into the ground and it's gonna be like a turret. But if they're gonna use them as tanks, the tanks are made for the offensive actions, for penetration of the defense lines, fighting against the enemy armored vehicles. So in that case, T-55 and T-54 tanks would be just demolished. Russia moves out all the supplies from the evacuation areas they previously announced, and there is no more fuel for the vehicles in those evacuation areas that are still controlled by the Russian army. Transnistria wants more Russian peacekeepers in their, let's say, country. Let me show you it. So this is the Ukraine, uh, this is Moldova, and this is Transnistria. So in what way they want more people in their army? Because Moldova denied the access for the Russian military men, and obviously Ukraine will not open its borders for the Russian peacekeepers. So this is the landlocked uh, state, if you may call it so-called state. Let's say it like that, so there is no any way how they may get more peacekeepers, maybe just from their local citizens who 